Order. This is the result of the fourth and final ballot. Yeah. 540 ballots were cast. There are some enga- other pressing engagements to take the people away. <laughs> Well, the serious business. The number of votes cast for each candidate was as follows: Chris Bryant, two hundred and thirteen; Sir Lindsay Hoyle, three hundred and twenty-five. Two ballots were spoiled. Sir Lindsay Hoyle has obviously secured more than fifty percent of the ballots cast. So the motion before the House. The question is that Sir Lindsay Hoyle takes the chair of this House as Speaker. As As many as of our that opinion say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. I invite Sir Lindsay Hoyle to take the chair of the House. No clapping, yeah. <laughs> Order. Order, can I just say, Mr Clark, thank you for the way that you've we've kept you longer than expected. I really appreciate it. You've been stabbed first and the job that you've done. It really is appreciated. Can I just say thank you to all the candidates? Whoever had been selected would have made a great speaker. And I've got to say, those who withdrew, Sir Henry Bellingham and Shelley Shvara, we thank you for the way that you wanted to ensure that we didn't stay another two rounds. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it is about the campaign, as I've discussed. It's about the challenges ahead for me and this chamber. I stand by what I've said. I stand firm that I hope this House will be once a great respected House, not just in here but across the world. That once again, it's the envy, and we've got to make sure that tarnish is polished away. That the respect and tolerance that we expect from everyone who works in here will be shown, and we'll keep that in in order. I also want to say to my family. There's one difficult part I want to get over. There is one person who's not here. My my daughter, Natalie. I wish she'd have been here. We all miss her as a family, no more so than her mum, Marie. I've got to say, she was everything to all of us. She will always be missed, but she will always be in our thoughts. I want to hopefully show that the experience I've shown previously will continue. As I promised, I will be neutral. I will be transparent. I think this House, we can do more to ensure that that transparency continues, no more so than I believe of the Commission. I have never sat on the Commission. I have never even seen the minutes of the Commission. (laughs) So I do believe there is a little bit of transparency once again. (laughs) And I've got to say, thank you, as I said to my family, but also thank you to my office they're also with me tonight. Yeah. They've been with me for a long time. In fact, Bev, who's up there and she'll get all yeah. embarrassed, has been with me for 21 years. Yeah. She left university and said, I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to have children. I don't want any of this life. Guess what? She's married. She's got children. And she's still with me. And the same with Peter and Mike. They've done a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah. They've been really good. So what I would say is, can I say thank you to everybody? It's been a long night. I don't want to keep any more, but I do stand by what I've said. This house will change, but it will change for the better. Thank you, everyone. Yeah!
I'm now going to call the first time the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I want to. I, I know that you're going to. I know you'll, you'll want to join with me in thanking, uh, first of all, uh, the Father of the House for the way he's conducted today's proceedings. And I, I pay renewed. Where is he? I pay. I pay uh, there he is. I pay, re, I pay re, renewed uh, tribute to uh, my right honourable and learned friend, who outranks just about every uh, member, not just in length of service, but also in distinction. Mr. Speaker, he has held six cabinet posts, including two offices of state, and his hush. Puppies have been found propped up on the desk of ministerial offices in four separate decades, uh, Mr. Speaker. And his continuing physical and intellectual robustness are a tribute to the benefits of a lifetime's diet, Mr. Speaker, of beer and curry and Castel cigars, all of which I hope he will continue to enjoy in a long and happy retirement at Trent Bridge or touring the famous jazz clubs in West. Bridgeford. Mr Speaker, in congratulating you on your election, I observe that you have prevailed over an extremely strong field and that every other candidate uh, earlier on spoke forcefully and well. And I'm not going to presume, Mr Speaker, to identify exactly what characteristics other members of this House saw in you uh, when uh, they elected you just now. But uh, speaking for myself, after uh, long, happy years of dealing with you, I think I know uh, what it is. And uh, uh, let me say, whenever any of us is preparing to speak in this chamber, we all know that there is a moment between standing up and when the speaker calls you, when your heart is in your mouth. And in that moment of, of anxiety about whether you're going to make a fool of yourself and so on, uh, and indeed at the moment when we sit down amid deafening silence, <laughs> the, the kindliness of the speaker, yeah. Yeah, 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 the yeah. kindliness of the speaker is absolutely critical to our confidence yeah. and yeah. the way we behave. And Mr Speaker, over the years I have observed that you have many good qualities and I'm sure you will stick up for backbenchers in the way that you have proposed. I'm sure that you will adhere to a strict Newtonian concept of time in PMQs. Uh, but I, I believe you, I believe Newtonian. Uh, but I believe you will also you will also bring your signature kindness kindness and reasonableness to our proceedings and thereby to help to bring us together as a parliament and as a democracy because no matter how fiercely we may disagree we know that every member comes to this place with the best of motives determined to solve to serve the oldest parliamentary democracy in the world and to achieve our goals by the peaceable arts of reason and debate invigilated by an impartial speaker which was and remains one of our greatest gifts to the world. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and congratulations. The, the other thing I forgot to thank was all the staff of this House, yeah. Joanna Dodds, in the way that she ran this election yeah, campaign. Yeah, yeah. So I thank everybody in the House. Can I now call upon the Right Honourable Jeremy Corbyn, Leader of the Opposition. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join others in offering my congratulations to you? on winning the election and thank the Father of the House for conducting the election in the ways he did. But also, congratulations and commiserations to the other candidates who didn't succeed in getting elected but nevertheless made sure we had a very good campaign and very serious debate all across the House, because I think that was very, very important. We also are very well aware of your abilities at um, chairing the House, um, because we've been through finance bills and budgets where you're robust in ensuring that people stick to the point and the subject, which is um, some comrades in the House on my side and other members on the other side sometimes deviate from the subject in hand. Unprecedented, I know, but there we are. Um, in your position, Mr Speaker, you're going to need eyes in the back of your head. It's a difficult job. You don't know what's coming at you next. And so I re realise you've actually been in training in this. So I've been looking at a photograph of you at the weekend, apparently, <laughs> apparently watching the Rugby Cup final, whilst at the same time not watching the television. 
So the only conclusion I can draw from this is that you literally do have eyes in the back of your head because you were able to make some very wise comments about the progress of the match that you were apparently not watching at the same time. So I think these qualities alone equip you to be an absolutely brilliant chair of this House. As you've said and many know, the job of Speaker is not just a ceremonial one. It is about uh, the rights of backbenchers to be able to speak up. It is about the power of Parliament to hold government to account. That is the whole principle and point of a parliamentary democracy, that we have a strong parliament that can hold the executive to account. And I know that you will stand up for that principle, because that is what you believe in. It's absolutely the heart of our political system. I also know that you take the well-being of everybody who works in this building and the well-being of members very, very seriously, because this is a fevered, a fevered and very imaginative place that we all work in. People are put under enormous stress. And sometimes people find themselves in a very lonely and desperate place because of that, both staff and members of this House. I know you take your responsibilities in that area very, very seriously, and I know that you want to make this an even more compassionate and humane place in which to work. And I want to con close by thanking you for your work, thanking you for taking this job on, but also assuring us that you will always stand up for the democratic values that this House represents and the power of an elected parliament to express its views and hold the executive to account, because that is the whole principle behind our parliamentary democracy. Yeah.